Good morning. It is still early May, and it is one of those days. It, this, you know, I had planned to come out today regardless, well, unless it was really yes. downpour, but I had not asked for weather better than this. I didn't think I could get it if I asked for it. Absolutely not a cloud in the sky. It's like 9 a.m. in the morning. It's already 13 degrees Celsius. Forecasting for 18 degrees Celsius, I think without question is going to exceed that. That'll put us into the mid 60s, the high 60s, maybe even the low 70s in Fahrenheit. And not a breeze yet. Now I expect the wind will pick up a little bit. Absolutely gorgeous day. But along with that do come the black flies. I don't know if you can see them, they're all around my head. I haven't yet applied any bug repellent, but I will be doing that without question. They're not the biting ones yet. These are the female black flies, but uh, they don't bite, but they get in your eyes and your nose and your mouth and ears, you know, all the places. They're just about as annoying as if they were biting. So I will have to put a little pellet on. They're landing in my eyes now. All right, plan for the day. Cup of coffee. Actually, that's not entirely true. I have a whole backpack full of stuff that I have to test out for future review videos. But for this video, it's all about coffee. Yet another very different coffee. I won't say any more about it now, but you can gather from the title. But if you want to see a little bit of the landscape, hopefully I've got a few things I can share with you. We'll check in on the questions of the day from the last video and we'll make a nice cup of coffee. And that's what today, this video, at least, will be all about. Now, a couple of other things you're probably asking, Mark, where's your Tilly hat? Well, it was getting close to switch over time in terms of weather from the Outback Tilly that I have, which is a waxed canvas, to something a little lighter, a little bit more breathable. But I, I won't say this is a mistake. I just didn't anticipate how much of a difference it would make. I decided to give it its uh, fully recoated, re-waxing the canvas itself. I've never given it a full coat before. So I have a mixture of beeswax and paraffin wax that I can melt down for doing waxing with. So I did, I melted it down, applied it with a paintbrush to the hat, and then used a heat gun on a lower setting to melt it in. Well, it worked, it looks great, but it's as hard as a rock. It's gonna take some time for it to loosen up again and get that classic worn in look. It's just, you know, I think it's so so uh, hard right now and so waterproof, I could probably use it as a bucket. So it wasn't as, I hadn't anticipated getting it that hard. Maybe I put too much beeswax on it. And anyway, I won't have to do it again for a number of years, will I? So uh, rather than switch into a, another Tilly, a lighter Tilly, I decided to put on a new ball cap I got, a nice green one from Decathlon. I mean, you can't beat $8 for a nice outdoor ball cap at Decathlon, so that's why I've got this. I don't have my usual wooden staff. I have a collapsible hiking pole because that's part of a test I'm doing for another piece of equipment. So I just another thing to carry. Otherwise, backpack is full of stuff as it is. All right. That's the start of this video. Let's see what else we can find to show you. So there's one of the Canada geese that have taken up residence on the lake. This one's about, I don't know, 75, 80 feet, maybe 90 feet away from me right now out over this little cove. They are actually very big animals. I'd like for him to come in a little closer. He's looking at me. He's curious, or it. I don't know if it's a male or a female. But I don't think they'll come in. Not unless they feel threatened and then you don't want them to come in because they can be very territorial very aggressive that's where they get the nickname here in canada of uh, flying death cobras if you've ever been attacked by one and i have 
you don't know why we call them that. All right, it's been about, I don't know, two or three hours since I last turned the camera on for this video. But in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of product testing. I've got things set up here and trying out some different things out here in the woods. And then, of course, I had to make myself some lunch. And that is going to be a standalone video. And oh, my goodness, it is a deep dish omelet or quiche. So watch for that. That'll come up, probably come out after this video does. Oh, it's one of the better ones I've ever made out here in the woods. And how do you top off a great meal? With a great cup of coffee. So that's what we're going to do now. So you obviously you saw from the title, this one is going to be a little different. So today's coffee is another one of the Nordic coffees. Um, Remember the one I, you may remember a couple of videos ago, I made one called Coca Cafe or Coca Cafe, which means boiled coffee or steeped coffee. And uh, it's basically the same thing. Very much like cowboy coffee. But the twist the Sami people of the Nordic countries put on is they put dried reindeer meat into the coffee. And that does a couple of things. One, it's very salted, so it takes a lot of the bitterness out of the coffee. And at the same time, it softens up the reindeer meat, which is like jerky or just dried meat, so that then they can eat it, of course. Well, I know a lot of people said, ah, I don't think so. That's, that's one is way over the top for me. No, no worries. I get it. I did mine with dried venison that I had at home. But here's one that is similar in one way, different in another. It is another coffee that is made by the Sami peoples and any number of peoples across all of the Nordic Scandinavian countries. And this one is called Keofast. Our Kaffeos, sorry, not Kale Fest. I'm coming um, Let's do that all again. Go ahead, Kaffeos. All right, it's been about, I'm going to say, two, maybe three hours since I last turned the camera on for this video. And in the meantime, I've been doing some product testing out here in the woods that eventually those things will come out in separate videos. But the other thing I did is just made myself one of my best lunches ever out here in the wood. It involved doing some baking in a titanium pot and the meal was a deep dish omelet, quiche, I guess it qualifies as boat. That video will come out probably after this one does. Watch for it because honestly it was one of the best meals I've ever made for myself out here. Really it was. And how do you top off a great meal? with a great cup of coffee. So that's what we're going to attempt here today. So obviously you saw from the title, it's another one of those different sounding names for a coffee. Kaffeost. Kaffeost is a term that's used right across all the Nordic Scandinavian coffees, used primarily or made primarily by the Sami peoples, but other people enjoy doing this as well. Now, it sounds similar to the one I made a little while ago called Coca-Cafe or Coca-Cafe, which is either boiled coffee or steeped coffee, variations on cowboy coffee. But the Sami, of course, do a twist on it, and you'll understand why when I explain. They put in dried reindeer meat right into the coffee. So I know people said, I don't think I'd be going to be trying that one. In my video, I use dried uh, venison, salted venison. Well, the salt on the meat does the thing. It, it, it actually makes the coffee less bitter, and that's very true. A lot of people will put, throw a little bit of salt into their cowboy coffee, so that part helps out. But the other thing it does is sit, the reindeer meat sitting in the coffee softens it up, so then as they finish up their coffee, they can eat the meat. So it's just it kind of serves two purposes for them there. Well, this is similar but different. Instead of using reindeer meat in the coffee, we're going to put cheese in the coffee. And I know some people's eyelids just went up. Yes, cheese. And it's a special kind of cheese. So uh, what is it called? Ustalipa. Ustalipa is otherwise known as bread cheese. It's a form of cheese that is made right across the Nordic countries, not all, just for coffee. Quite often people will use it instead of bread. It's, it, uh, it's made from fresh uh, cheese curds. That's the best way to say it. And I, I can't tell you how many different videos I went through looking for instructions on how to make not only the, the cafios, but also the ustalipa, which is the, the cheese itself. And uh, I, I, well, I'll tell you what I came up with. I couldn't make the exact thing that they make in the Nordic countries, but I came up with something that is so close and so available to us here, at least in Canada, that it's worth you trying. So yeah, basically they take cheese curds, they make fresh cheese curds, they then put them in a pan, quite often a cast iron fry pan, they put it in an oven and they bake it in the pan until it browns on the top. They flip it over and brown it on the bottom so it dries it out somewhat as well. 
And then when they go to, they want to use it, they can cut a slice off, put some jam on it if they wish, like bread, uh, or they can chop it up into little cubes, put it in a cup, and then pour their coffee on top of it. And what happens when you do that is the coffee, it doesn't melt the cheese, but it makes it soft. It's almost like mozzarella on top of a pizza. It's not quite that soft. It doesn't get runny and gooey, but it does get very soft, kind of like a baked brie if you've ever tried that. So that's what it is. Now, like I said, I could not get the Oostalipa here in Canada. It's just not imported and I couldn't find anyone who made it locally. Now, apparently, if you're from, I think it is Wisconsin, they make it down there, but they call it Finnish squeaky cheese. So look up Finnish squeaky cheese, you may be able to find it. But what I did find is almost identical, and I just had to do a little work to turn it into the Ustalipa. Well, actually, two things. Uh, the way the curds work is they, they bake really well in a dish. So they don't burn, they just kind of bake and brown quite nicely. I, mean, I suppose you could burn it if you really tried, but it's a nice cheese for using with heat. Halloumi, a Middle Eastern cheese, is made very much exactly the same way. Now, the halloumi is a little bit saltier than the Oostalipa is, but it reacts almost identical. In fact, I have some halloumi that I browned up in the oven that I'm going to use as part of the demonstration. But the other thing is cheese curds. Now, we know something about cheese curds in Canada. In Quebec, the homeland of poutine, they make cheese curds. They put them on their French fries and they cover them with a rich, dark gravy. The cheese curds melt it. Wow, it's just such a rich and just decadent meal. If you've never had poutine, it's if you're ever in Quebec, then you've got to get authentic poutine. Now, there's lots of people making poutine of their own. They make you know, a lot of restaurants and things, but nothing like authentic poutine from a truck on the side of the road in Quebec City. Uh, you know, I think, Alex, I know you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, we have cheese curds. We have, and quite often the cheese curds themselves are referred to as squeaky cheese. So I tried it. I put them in a small dish. Actually, it was a 16 centimeter pan from my 16 centimeter uh, zebra belly pot. And I popped that in the oven. The cheese curds melted. They browned on top. I took it out. I flipped the whole thing over and uh, they browned on the bottom. And now I've got what is a very passable Oostalipa. Now, and somebody's going to tell me it's not the same. Likely it isn't. I just can't compare it because, of course, I can't get the Oostalipa. So why would they even do this in the Nordic countries? Same thing with the meat, the reindeer meat. Why would they even do it? Well, there's a couple of things. What I have learned about the Nordic Scandinavian countries and coffee is that they populate the top five of the top 10 countries in the world for coffee consumption. They are the, they use more coffee than any other country in the world. And I went to the list, um, Google it, it, you'll find it yourself. The top, you know, is like, I think it was Finland, Sweden, um, uh, Iceland, Nor Greenland, you know, all of the countries at list from one to five. Canada actually ranked in the top 10 as number 10. I was a little surprised. We were ahead of a few other countries. I thought it might be drinking more coffee. But the number one place actually drinks twice the amount of coffee per capita, per person, each year as Canadians do. And that's the difference between the first place and 10th place. I didn't go into the rest of the list around the world. So just an interesting little fact. So coffee is a large part of the culture in Scandinavian countries for a number of reasons, I guess. Uh, it's been speculated. I looked for it. Why? Like, why is coffee so popular? Uh, you know, some people said it's, well, because it is so dark so much of the year. It's so cold so much of the year. Coffee is a way of staying warm and getting energy during the cold months of the year. Well, we have those as well. So it could be that. I can understand that would be a part of it. And uh, it, it's very much a social thing. It's a cultural thing where you don't invite people into your house and give them a cup of tea like we do here in Nova Scotia, you give them a cup of coffee. It's just assumed as soon as you meet up, the coffee goes on and that's what you share. So I think that was a large part of it. Uh, it also, coffee became so popular because it, at least I understand historically, is that alcohol was so heavily taxed by the government because it was so hard to get into the Nordic countries that coffee became the obvious replacement. So that may have played into it as well. Okay. The other thing is, because it is so cold, when you're having your cheese in your coffee, not only are you enjoying a nice cup of coffee, but the cheese gives you the much needed calories to go through the day. So that's where the combination comes from. Is it good? Well, let me just make it and I'll show you and we'll tell you how good it is. All right, so the process of making cafe yeast starts with making 
coca coffee, which is the steeped coffee. So I have my water on. Now, I, I must tell you this. I couldn't have an open fire today because of the fire ban, but I can have charcoal. So I've got charcoal. This is charcoal I use to cook my lunch with. So it has some heat left and I decided to use it to make my coffee. So that's where we'll start. It's on a low, low simmer rather than a high boil. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit more traditional way of doing it. Now, the coffee I'm using is a Rampage, which is a medium, Rampage Riot, which is a medium roast coffee. In the Nordic countries, they prefer a light roast coffee for this purpose, and they grind it quite coarse, kind of like this. Hopefully that's showing up. That's quite a coarse grind, and that works better. One, two, got to count here. Three, four. That should be enough. I got about a cup and a half of water in there. And yeah, okay, so that's all there is to it. I'm just going to leave that set for a few minutes to really get nice and strong. And then we're going to pour it in the cup. Now, I'll show you the cheese as that does steep a little. So here's the cheese that I made, my two versions of the Ustalipa. The first one, this is the halloumi. So this is a piece of halloumi that I roasted in the oven. You can see what it is. It's just a flexible soft cheese. By the way, if you don't have halloumi from your grocery store, you don't have cheese curds in your grocery store, I understand brie will work for this as well. But if you try to bake the brie, it's going to just, I think it's going to get very runny, but it's a very soft cheese. The advantage of roasting it, and by the way, here is my roasted cheese curds, as you can see right here, this, or roasted, grilled, broiled cheese curds, made like a piece of bread. Uh, the advantage of doing this is a couple of things. The um, top of it caramelizes a little bit, so I feel it adds flavor, maybe even a little bit of sweetness to the coffee afterwards. So yeah, that's, that's the, the reason why you're going to want to try and roast it a little bit like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear pieces off. I'm going to put a little bit of each, some pieces of halloumi in here. So I got three pieces of halloumi. Might eat some of the other. And now I'm going to put in some cheese curds. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to be able to see the difference when I uh, roast it. Maybe four pieces of, maybe even five pieces. I've done this before. It is tasty. It really is. Okay, in a few minutes' time, when the coffee is, I think, well, uh, not boiled, steeped, we'll say, I'll add it to the cooksip. Oh, by the way, yes, you've got to have a cooksip. Well, you don't have to have a cooksip. But if you have a cooksip, it's much more authentic because that's the way it would have been served in the Scandinavian countries. All right, I'll bring you back when it's time to pour the coffee in, and then we'll give it a taste test shortly after. All right, like two or three minutes of uh, steeping. Oh, yeah, you can see the rolling away down there. I just wanted to show you this because I've always stated that I'm not a fan of boiled coffee, cowboy coffee, because it creates bitterness. But I did it intentionally this time so that I can demonstrate the difference in taste when you add it to the cheese. All right, I'm going to take that off, give it a second, and then I'll pour it over the cheese. All right, normally I would uh, take the coffee and just let it set and cool for a little bit, maybe throw a little bit of cold water in it just to take the grounds to the bottom. But I want to use the maximum heat that the coffee has to help melt the cheese. So I've got a little strainer just to catch the grounds as it goes through. So I don't get too many grounds in my coffee. All right, and that's all there is to it, right? Okay, I'll put the coffee back on the heat so I can get a little refill. So automatically you can see, or right now you should be able to see, I'm trying to, is it better with a shadow? Better without. Okay. You should be able to see that the, there's some oil starting to pool on top of the coffee. So that's coming out of the cheese itself as the cheese heats up. You might think this is going to be gross, but in fact it really makes for a smooth cup of coffee. All right? I'll give that a couple minutes because of course now it is really too hot for me to drink. So once it cools down a little bit, we'll do the taste test. All right, I think it's ready. This is full, very full. I'm trying not to spill it on myself. So you can see I have a spoon with me as well. All right, so traditionally you can do one of two things. You can either start scooping the coffee or the cheese out and eating it now, or you can drink it with the cheese in and then scoop the coffee out at the end. I just want to have a little taste of the coffee first. Ah, 
So I've made it before, and yeah, it's 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 really nice. It really is nice. Now, the last time I made it, I didn't actually boil my coffee. I actually just made a cup of coffee over top of, with a uh, pour-through. So this is traditional boiled or coca cafe, or co-cafe. That's the boiled term for coffee in the Swedish countries, but no reindeer meat. So yeah, that's what I made. I'll tell you this. Uh, I've said it before, boiled coffee, cowboy coffee, is not my favorite because it tends to be somewhat bitter. This is anything but bitter. It's smooth, it has nice mouthfeel, and that's done by the cheese. There is some salt in the cheese, of course, and that's done by the oils that are floating on top of it. The two together actually really smooth out the flavor of the coffee a lot. It really, really does. And, uh, still hot, but you know, I can drink that a lot. Of course, you have to start with good coffee, right? I always say that. Start with good coffee, like Rampage. All right, let's try a piece of the cheese. Which one is this? Okay, so this is the the curds or the squeaky cheese. You see? Okay. Mm. By the way, there's a reason why they call it squeaky cheese. Um, it has a texture to it, yes, it's a little bit chewy, unlike other cheese that have been aged, and it does feel like it's squeaking when you chew on it with your teeth. So that's the reason it's referred to as squeaky cheese. Even cheese curds here in Canada can be referred to as squeaky cheese. Now, I'm trying to find a piece of the halloumi. Which one is the halloumi? One of these has got to be halloumi. That might be the halloumi. Let's try that. Almost identical. Almost identical in terms of, ah, there's a good piece of halloumi. In terms of texture and flavors. There's the halloumi that I put in. Mmm. So the halloumi got softer than the cheese curds did, than the oostalipa, or at least my version of oostalipa. Um, I think I like that a little bit better. It just got a little bit softer. Nothing wrong with the Oostalipa, cheese curds in my case, but the halloumi, like I said, just got a little bit softer. Now, here's the thing. While the coffee is smoothed out by the cheese, the cheese also picks up the flavor of the coffee. So between the caramelization that occurred when I put it in the oven and the coffee and the heat, hmm. Oh. I think there's probably some viewers on my channel that know that I'm on, well, I think most people know by now, I'm on a ketogenic diet, which is a high-fat, high-protein diet, low-carb. Well, this is both that. This is high-fat and high-protein. So it's a new version of, of a coffee. What was it? Bulletproof coffee or keto coffee? It's a new way of doing it in my mind. Oh, that is so nice. Perfect to add to the meal that I made. Um, okay, I'm going to take a break now and just uh, talk for a minute about something I almost forgot to talk about. And if you were watching my videos, you know I like to throw in a, a question of the day. Something that I've seen out here, ask you if you know what it is, explain it to me. And uh, yeah, I didn't do that today. I, one, I didn't find anything I thought would be that interesting because things still really haven't started growing here yet. I'll, I'll do it some more. But the other thing is, I just want, oh, I'm going to have to get my phone. Give me a minute. I got to come back because I got to make sure I credit the right people. Okay, I just had to get my phone out because I had a few notes there to uh, make sure I credit the right people for answering the question of the day. So I put two questions of the day in the last video. And the first one was identifying a tree, a tree that is both a conifer and a deciduous at the same time, meaning it has needles like a conifer, produces little cones, uh, and then loses its needles in the fall. And it was Jim F. Jim, of course you would know this one, was the first person to correctly identify it. He referred to it as tamarack. And yes, that is the correct name for it. However, it is the proper, full-on proper name is Eastern Larch, and, uh, or Larix laricinia. Okay, that's the Latin name for it. But it often just goes by Larch, Tamarack, and Hatmatak. Those are all names for the same tree. And I had another viewer that didn't realize her from another part of the world, a Duke down under in Australia. He said, I've never heard of a deciduous 
needled or conifer tree. And I looked, there's about half a dozen around the world. We have uh, two types of larch in Canada. This is the eastern larch that I'm referring to. So that was that one. A lot of people got that one right. So uh, I wasn't too surprised. Well, maybe a little bit that so many people got it right. But yeah, so that's what that one. Now the other one, uh, Archaic Wisdom was the first person to properly identify the flower. I showed a small flower with uh, elliptical green leaves uh, laying on the ground, a little, mostly white little flower, a little bit of pink running through it. And Archaic Wisdom identified as trailing arbutus, otherwise known as Mayflower. And uh, yes, you're absolutely correct. But I had a two part question there. And the second part of that question is, what is the significance to, of the Mayflower to us here in Nova Scotia? And nobody answered. And I was very surprised from my Nova Scotia viewers that they did not answer what that is. So I'm going to put it back out there. Somebody better get it before the next video. What is the significance of the Mayflower to us here in Nova Scotia? Okay? All right, we're about to wrap this video up. All right, just a little bit more cheese here. Look at the cheese. You can see how it takes on that coffee color the longer it sits. Hmm. That's good. good. Okay, it's not everybody's cup of coffee for sure, but I really like it. It's not something I'm going to do often, but it's a nice and different way of having coffee and combining some much needed calories during the winter to a cup of coffee and while well, you enjoy the both of them at the same time making the cheeses simple if you have access to Oostalipa where you are in your part of the world grab some if you haven't tried this before probably you have if you don't have it if you're in the states you may be able to buy it as Finnish squeaky cheese if you're in Canada, you're not going to have any luck doing that. So you're going to have to go out and look for cheese curds or poutine curds. It can be referred to it either way and make your own. It's worth it. Or buy some halloumi. Halloumi is also another good choice. I haven't tried the brie, but um, I understand it does work. Maybe I'll give it a try another time. I have a little bit more coffee left in the pot, so I'm going to do that. All right, that's everything I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, or any topics for future hike in a coffee type videos, put them in the comments section below. I've had some good suggestions so far or any types of way of making coffee that I can explore and try and make for you on video. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.